So there are all kinds of different vent covers that go on all kinds of different devices. It might be the cover of the fan on your computer, it might be the cover of a power supply or something inside of some piece of ducting or industrial equipment. But the way people design them right now hasn't really changed. They just make a pattern and they punch it through a plate and then they mount the plate on the duct to protect people from putting their fingers into the fan blades. But there's so much more that you can do with this feature. With 3D printing, you're able to create geometries and styles that are A, more manufacturable, for the process and also can give you new capabilities that had never been possible before. So in this video, we're going to go through how to optimize the design of a fan cover so that number one, it is maximally manufacturable with mass production 3D printing like what we do here at Slant 3D. But then we will also talk about applications and variations of this that can only be produced with 3D printing so that you can get features and benefits that were never before possible. So this is a fairly typical fan vent cover design. A bunch of holes popped through a single plate. And this is fine, traditionally is a very good way to do it, even though it creates a lot of pins inside of like a mold. But this is a very complex design to print for what is a fairly simple part. If you're using 3D printing, you want to avoid what are called islands. Basically, as a layer line goes up through here, you don't wanna to have to stop and move to a different place and then move to a different place. Each one of these cross sections of these holes looks like a bunch of little mountains. And that can introduce the possibility for errors and stringing and additional post-processing and all kinds of things that you just don't wanna to have to deal with, especially if this is a exceptionally small because then you're dealing with the details resolution of the nozzle that the part is being printed with. So this can turn into a very expensive way to do it. But a way to make it cheaper is to actually just use slots. And slots are a really good way of making a fan vent cover, except for the fact that if they are a certain distance, generally about one inch or longer, they have to have support. And again, the support is now introducing more post-processing. So you don't really get very much benefit because all of this stuff right here has to be pulled out of those slots, which is just a, a cumbersome process and you gotta tear it out and you might damage your part or whatever else it happens to be there. But that extra support, that introduces the problem. When post-processing, if you have support materials, you can potentially damage the part, mar the part, cause issues that would cause the part to be rejected down the line. So while this is okay, you really only wanna do kind of long rectangular slots. So like side vents and that kind of thing are best done with slots. And the reason for this is that it only has to print over here and then it only has to print over here rather than with the traditional vent where it has to go to that hole, then go to that hole, then go to that hole, then go to that hole, which can create a lot more errors too because this part could also be broken more readily because you have essentially created a perforated edge there. A much better option than traditional slots is to use still slots, but just make the minor modification of having them cut through the plate at an angle. By doing this, you now increase the cross-sectional area so you don't have that breaking issue that I just demonstrated there on that last one, but you also are able to get much longer slots with much less support. Some support is still necessary, but you can sometimes get past that by just putting small little support ribs in along those supports so that now you have that minimum bridging distance that we were talking about there. So we can basically put a rib down the middle of this and you could eliminate this little bit of support on the back here. But this support is very easy to remove because it has much less surface contact with the part. So it can almost be popped off the part as soon as it comes off the machine. But these angled slots are a really good way to build a vent that still has great airflow, that doesn't really mess with you in any sort of way. And it also has the side benefit of not having as much pass through of like light. So if you're doing something with like RGB and you don't want light to shine through your fan shroud, these angled holes can enable that. But you can take that idea even further. We're using 3D printing. It doesn't have to shoot straight on through. Instead, you can actually have something curve through. This fan vent, you cannot see through at all. And the reason for that is because these holes actually make an S turn through the part. As you can see right here, each one of the holes takes a basically U-turn through the center of the piece so that you can now totally block any sort of light pass through. Now this design is a little bit cumbersome because you have to have a thicker plate than you normally would with like a traditional slot or hole. Because in order to accommodate that curve in a reasonable sort of way, you have to have a fairly thick piece. Or you can make the hole smaller so that you can get more curvature in there without having the issues of intersecting with the other tubes that you're creating. 
But this is unmanufacturable with any other process. You cannot make a curve like this with any sort of other manufacturing process. And I'll take this a step further. What if you don't want to just make a U-turn through the part, but you actually want to create some kind of geometry that might actually catch dirt? You could create curves to where you kind of create a high velocity flow that sends dirt out into the edges of the vent where you could have pockets that could catch it and collect it over time. And then when you reverse airflow, it blows that dirt back out. That's basically something like this, where you have a bunch of holes in the front, but then inside they actually make an S turn and then come out the other end. Again, this makes a part that's very thick, but it's not that big of a deal because again, you're trying to get some additional functionality of this. But when you're creating a lot of these snaky tubes inside of the part, you can start to run into intersection issues. If these tubes are not all exactly the same, if they're even more complex and there's something like this, now you don't really get very much overlap with them in the same plane. But the way to get around that is to literally just slightly adjust the holes and stair step them so that you can overlap these tubes. And now you can have the same amount of density and the interior just looks like spaghetti because you've created so many holes and tubes overlapping and intertwining with each other that you don't have to worry about it. Another option rather than just putting holes on a slightly stair-stepped cadence is you can actually rotate the tube patterns inside of here. So this one would be flat, this one would be 90 degrees, this one would be 90 degrees from there and then repeat that pattern around so that they overlap and combine a lot. So there's a number of ways to pack in a lot of distance inside of this part because again, it's impossible to manufacture this any other way, but printing does not have a problem doing this type of complex geometry. And now these S curves, as air flows through here, you could design it so that it has little pockets that would like catch dirt and create vortices so that this almost acts like a filter. You might wanna be able to change the speed of the airflow so you can change the diameter of these holes. You can do some very complex engineering so that what was just a cover to keep people from putting their fingers in the fan is now a functional part of your device and can help to improve its longevity and improve its overall customer experience. All of that is enabled by this geometry. But there's all kinds of other things that you can do around this type of geometry. Sure, the S-curves are a really easy one that cannot be made any other way, but one that is a bit more mundane is just little vortex generators. So in this case, we created a grid of square holes, and you could pack these tighter if you wanted to. But each one of these square holes has little saw teeth on them. And what those do is as air is moving through this part, they create vortices within that air. So that might be useful to disturb the air more if this is on top of a heat sink because chaotic air is better at exchanging heat than smooth laminar air. So churning it up as it's moving through the duct is a way better way of getting better heat exchange on the part so that you can pre-prep the air. So again, rather than just going from a few holes letting air through, you can go through a few holes that are actively stirring and churning it. And since these little teeth are designed in such a way, this could not be made any other way. You'd have to go through and make like a screw hole or something like that in order to create these types of ridges that would disturb the air in just the right way. And now you can also modify that geometry so that you can disturb it in a very engineered sort of way, which gives you a lot more capability about what you can do. So we've gone through all the different ways to have a flat plate with holes in it. You have so much more control now with 3D printing because you can create complex structures inside of that to either catch dirt, increase noise dampening, disturb the air and make it chaotic so that you have better heat exchange, or just block light so that you have control of how your product looks from the outside. But also you can just make it more manufacturable than standard holes by just modifying the design a little bit by putting tapered holes through there but there's one step even further we can go with this. All of this goes from one side of the plate to the other side of the plate, going from here to there, basically in a straight line. But again, we can do whatever we want. What if you don't wanna pull air straight through? What if you wanna pull from someplace else or not even allow have this front facing pattern of holes showing up? Well, now you can do something like this. This is a round plate but each one of these holes, and you could increase the density in the showing of this so that the fan could mount here on top, but then the holes themselves, the intake holes, or possibly the outtake holes, I don't know what you're trying to do, can be along the outer diameter so that now air comes in through here but then shoots out sideways. Now you always have to make sure that you're engineering your airflow appropriately, 
But again, this sort of geometry is really tough to do and you get it for free with 3D printing. You could also re-engineer this so that it could be printed with like copper or some kind of thermally conductive filament so that you can now mount this sort of design on top of what you're trying to exchange heat with. And you've got a fan right there, airflow going out the sideways, and you could create all kinds of grid patterns in a high surface contact area right here so that there's a good air exchange and you can create a fantastic heat exchanger rather than simply an air direction management system of just a fan duct. So 3D printing enables all kinds of new capabilities because you can create geometries that were never possible before. And with mass production 3D printing, with like large print farms like here at Slant 3D, you can actually produce those at scales into hundreds of thousands or even millions of parts. So whether it's a consumer device or an industrial product, you can get the parts that you need quickly and reliably, but now you can actually design for the process to get capabilities that are never possible before, or just make it more manufacturable if you just wanna stay with a plate with holes in it. For that case, just make sure you're cutting the holes through at an angle. Have a great day, everybody.